Hey, hey, everyone, it is Tuesday, and we're going to get into some tabletop RPG elite philosophy. Number eight, part two of our most important RPG elite quality. It's about the story, not about the system. Now, we started part one of this last week, and we've got a lot of videos for this one particular quality because, as I mentioned in the last video, this is the most important RPG Elite quality. So, if you think you're an RPG Elite, it has to be about the story. Because if it's not, you're not an RPG Elite. You might have some RPG Elite qualities, but this one right here is a must. Actually, they all are, but this is at the top. You must play tabletop RPGs because it's about the story. This is one of those things that really defines an RPG elite. Now, because I'm taking my time on this, it's this like four, vi four videos, five videos, four videos at least. I know that. And it's not going to drop every Tuesday. So I'm going to intersperse this as far as as throughout the month of August, probably as an extra video or something like that. I'm just doing it on Tuesday today because I wanted to start on this very important section. And this is laying a foundation. It really is. And those of you who've been around for a while, you know what I'm talking about. If you're new to the channel, well, welcome. Welcome to RPG Elite. This is the place where we put the RP back into RPG. Oh, for real. And we give you tools, tips, tutorials, and real talk on how to make your tabletop RPG experience more immersive and enjoyable. I'm saying that thinking about the video and I'm going, oh my gosh, this video is so much about that. It is so much about that, especially the immersive part of it. Oh, goodness. I'm excited about today's video. Now, some of you may not have the patience to wait and look at the foundation that I'm laying here. You don't want to do that. That's fine. Got video chapters below. So you can go ahead and skip around to wherever you like. You run the risk, however, of missing some parts because this has happened. I've had some people, they might have skipped around and then they say, hey, why didn't you mention this or that? And I say, I did mention it. So you must have skipped it. And then they go back and like, oh, I uh, must have skipped it. So you do run that risk when you skip around, but if you don't have the time, then watch what you can. Come back later. Hey, press that save button and you can watch it later. Hey, there you go. Solves that problem. And plus, I do this because you might be wondering, why is he doing this? Everybody in the audience is not the same. I do not assume that everybody in the audience knows something about tabletop RPGs. I don't do that. And this is an educational channel. So since that's the case, I want to educate people. So if you're brand new to this thing, you don't know nothing about RPG elite philosophy. You don't know anything hardly about tabletop RPGs. You're just coming in because, oh, I don't know, maybe the thumbnail got you or maybe somebody said that you should watch this video or whatever reason. Well, this video is going to be part of the foundation of something that's very important to those of us who are RPG elites. If you're interested in that, then keep on watching because there's plenty mo coming after this video. But today, let's get into part two, RPG elite philosophy quality number eight. It's about the story, not about the system. And I'm gonna catch you on the other side after this enjoy in our last video we touched on how story permeates all of our lives in fact we said our lives are actual stories it touches us in places we normally don't think deeply enough about to recognize in the tabletop rpg community as a whole you heard me mention several times throughout this series of RPG Elite philosophy videos that mindset for an RPG Elite is crucial. As a matter of fact, the whole RPG Elite philosophy is a mindset. 
How we think about things influence how we approach them. It's no different when it comes to tabletop RPGs. Many people approach tabletop RPGs as a means of escapism. They want to escape into another world. And though that sounds romantic in a sense, the actual wording is misleading and it creates a mindset that is not truly beneficial to the tabletop RPG player. Let's look at this word escapism. Escapism is the predilection to seek distraction from the unpleasantness of reality. Now, the problem with escapism is that on a good day, it's nothing but a reprieve. Whatever the individual who is involved in the escapism was trying to get away from will still be there when they get back and they will be none the better for it. They have simply come out of hiding at the end of their tabletop RPG session. Now, vacationing is a different mindset. And it's a better way to view the tabletop RPG experience. Vacationing is a time for rest, refreshment, and invigoration. If we approach tabletop RPGs as the mind vacationing, there will be better benefits just from changing our mindsets about this great hobby that we are involved in. In addition, just like approaching the tabletop RPG in escapism, the reality will still be there. It's something everyone still has to face. However, when you are finished with your mind vacation, you are in a better position to face it mentally because your mind has been rejuvenated from taking that vacation. Now, RPG elites approach tabletop RPG sessions as a vacation. It's time for a reset, it's time for rest. It's time to get reinvigorated. This is why RPG elites take the time that they invest in tabletop RPGs so seriously. They wanna maximize the benefits of the tabletop RPG session for themselves and for the others they are playing with in the most positive way that they can. And to get the maximum benefit from this mind vacation that we go on, in a tabletop RPG session, where we have to be engaged in the story. Many tabletop RPGs are directly inspired by one of several different vehicles of storytelling. So let's take a look at them. People read novels for the story. They want to get sucked into this world that the author has concocted. It's a vacation from reality that has multiple benefits because reading is far more beneficial than sitting down and watching a television show or a movie. Here are some of the benefits of reading. It strengthens the brain. It increases the ability to empathize. It builds your vocabulary. It helps prevent age-related cognitive decline like Alzheimer's and dementia. It reduces stress. It prepares you for a good night's sleep. It helps alleviate depression symptoms. And it's the possibility that it may help you live longer, probably because of all the rest of the benefits in this list. Novels have been a source of inspiration for tabletop RPGs forever. Actually, the tabletop RPG right now that I'm playing and I've been running it for a few years and you guys have seen it behind me on my set, even though that's not the actual version that I'm running, it's inspired directly from the line of novels by J.R.R. Tolkien, Lord of the Ring. Another that is very popular today is Call of Cthulhu, and that's derived from the works of H.P. Lovecraft. Even if you use reading as a form of escapism, you will get way more benefit from it. However, you'll get far more out of it if you have the proper mindset. Out of all the vehicles of storytelling we will go over, this one is said to be the hardest to accomplish, but also the one with the most benefits. I 
highly recommend getting into the habit of reading good fiction. Not only will you become more knowledgeable about the particular genre of the tabletop RPG you are running, but you will always have a stimulated imagination which will prevent you from running out of ideas. This is something that seems to be a common bane for many GMs. I've heard this and I've been like, I never run out of ideas, but that's because I'm a reader. This is why in the back of many tabletop RPG core books, they suggest reading certain fiction books related to that particular genre of tabletop RPG. Now with film and television, it's the same thing, except we're engaging different senses. We're engaging our eyes more than we are our imagination because they basically are not allowing you to imagine anything. They're just giving you pictures. Your ears are involved as well with the music and the sound effects and sound itself. And though it's not as beneficial as reading, it also comes with benefits. It can boost your mood, it relaxes you, can be motivational, it can be a vehicle to improve relationships if you guys share a movie together. It can reduce stress, and actually depending on what you are watching, it can be educational, like this video. There have been several television shows and films that have been created into tabletop RPGs. Let me give you some examples. Let me go over there! Get him! Aliens. Star Trek. This is the captain. We have a little problem with our entry sequence, so we may experience some slight turbulence and then explode. Firefly. Bond. Now that's just to name a few. And some movies and television series get made into tabletop RPGs for these reasons that I'm about to list. Number one, they're good stories. Number two, they have story elements conducive to telling more good stories. Storytelling. It is essential for the RPG elite. Now, I've got a question for you, and I'm curious about this, for real, because I'm gonna read the comments, may not respond to all of them, but I am gonna read them. So we went through how novels, movies, and television series, how they have inspired the creation of tabletop RPGs. I wanna know which one of the tabletop RPGs that have been made is your favorite that has been inspired by a novel, a movie, or a television series. I want you to let me know in the comments below. Did I mention it? And if I didn't mention it, I want you to mention it. And like I said, I may not get to every comment, but I am going to read them. Very curious about that one. Very curious. Okay, folks, if you liked everything here or you thought the video was copacetic, then you need to go and crush the like button. And if you want to stick around for a little bit because you thought it was interesting, then hey, feel free, hit the subscribe button, smash that notification bell as well. That way you'll know when a brother is coming out with a video, which is on Tuesdays and Fridays. But as I mentioned earlier, I got a couple extra videos this month. So 
I don't know when I'm coming out with those, so make sure you hit that bell. All right, a brother, he's gonna slide on out and... So what's the stage left? Peace! 5,000 leets, Audi.